Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. I just um, finished this painting and had just filmed the video for it, but I wanted to come back and paint over it. In fact, I literally just paused it a second ago and <laughs> restarted again. There's more we can do over it, more we can do to kind of embellish and have fun with it. And it's not just painting for the sake of like not sure what to do and just painting on top. There's some ideas and things we can play around with. So my first thing I want to do, I wanted to grab, I want to grab Payne's Gray, Ultramarine Blue, and just kind of splatter this. And I figured this texture would look interesting with the foreground and then slightly hanging over that, um, the background the receding hills and water. And I figured that would be the first like big oomph. What's splattering? I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. I'm not sure how much um, like the color variety really affects it. We do have a drying shift that takes place and it does lighten up some. And if you splatter with gouache you do get a pronounced effect but more simpler closer together colors here next thing I wanted to build up some trees or at least twigs along this edge and I'll grab the number one. I'm gonna have to be careful because I have the wet splatters there and I'm gonna want to rest my hand on it and then I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna cause issues. That's what happened right here in the um, previous stages if I don't dry off completely. The original intention for this scene was to do a cloud sky painting and create the sense of depth. And I think that was achieved, but I did feel it was lacking. I do have a tendency to go overboard in the foreground, or at least I enjoy going overboard in the foreground. I guess maybe that's one way you can identify um, a Broussard painting, right? And I just think about this edge, this cliff edge or hill, wherever we're standing on and looking, how we would have all this growth there. Maybe we might have an opening there. We do kind of pinch the scene in a little bit. And I'm concerned that if I was to put a tree in on this side, I would be way too um, pinching in of the scene. Let's take in the hake. Adding a little bit of foliage. some Payne's Gray. Just gently hitting the paper with the hate brush, I'm getting dry brush grass effects. Just a little bit, just a little bit here. Very timid. Pain 
is gray. I'm rolling the brush in my hand. That's just my own personal way of trying to prevent the stamping effect. I've talked about that quite a bit with different tools. I'll grab Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. Just uh, mixing those as a dark. And scrape it all on this one. I think next time a higher horizon line while doing a foreground like this might be a good key. And potentially starting these branches lower here might create a sense of depth on the little cliff that we're on instead of just having the twigs and the branches right on the edge. My buddy Bill has goats now and they're absolutely adorable. And if you ride along the fence line, you'll see how they, they munch and chomp right along that, all nice and clean. And his property used to be farmland years ago, a cow pasture. And since then, like trees and everything have just overgrown it. But now that he has some cows again and goats and sheep, you can see where they started eating into those areas and creating the animal paths, which is very cool. The reason I bring that up is if you have like a path in nature, you can always often find where animals would walk to munch or to get to water. So if you ever paint somebody and somebody says, oh, why would there be a path there? And like, I'll just say for the cows, for the deer. For the rabbits. Okay, then throw some birds in. I'm trying to cover up that little spot that I messed up. <laughs> This was a fun one. Sometimes I get bogged down in the uh, filming of things for the channel, um, which I really enjoy and I'm not complaining. Uh, but you know, today is Tuesday after work. It's our last really full week of school. So next week we have off on the Friday. Then we're off for spring break. Then from there, we come back, and we have school still, but then we lead into state testing in March. And then the seniors will do their finals early. It's the, it's the graduation for seniors is a little bit early and they start wrapping everything up. So it's that, that last week, just gotta, I've just got to get through this week. Here we go. There's a variety of washes in here. Thicknesses of the line. The depth. 
there is the number four. There we go. You can always do a low tree trunk. It's even scraggly and old right in here. And just building the depth even more. Let's see how this all dries. I'm gonna pause it. All right, we are pretty dry. Um, I am happy that I filmed the, this second one going in and playing around with the foreground. Um, Color-wise, everything really started to blend together in that foreground, but I think the tonal contrast between that and the background of the sky works, and it just gives you the tonalist vibe. I had previously signed this one right before starting this um, video, but I painted over it. The fountain pen that I'm using has platinum carbon ink in it, which is a waterproof, light, fast fountain pen ink, but it is prone to clogging certain fountain pens, so you want to be careful with that. But I do find that this ink seeps into watercolor and doesn't isn't the most pronounced whenever you're writing or drawing on top of it. But it works, I, I just can't find, well I have a Micron, but it's a Micron brush pen. It just gets a little too big with the signature. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, of course you're welcome to follow along. Please like, subscribe, follow. If you wanna support this channel, I have the Patreon, the Etsy, the um, YouTube membership page, and different ways. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day, bye.